So are you enjoying Potsdam so far? Well, tell us about Wikimedia. Uh, okay, I can do that because um, so this we have not yet started. We're just making uh, time for everybody to arrive. Uh, so I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about if I say Wikimedia? Uh, people usually recon recognize better the brand Wikipedia. So uh, we at the foundation are a non-profit organization. Uh, we are uh, funded just by uh, very generous donors. And our mission is to support uh, all the uh, open knowledge projects uh, that are maintained by the community. So we are just uh, the foundation to support them. We don't own Wikipedia. We don't uh, uh, have a decision on what's being edited or, or not. Uh, what we try to do is to support uh, financially in terms of uh, software development, so uh, MediaWiki mostly, and other software uh, related to uh, run the wikis. And in particular, our team is in charge of maintaining the servers to receive a huge amount of traffic that uh, uh, we have to uh, to be able to serve not only Wikipedia, Wikipedia is the most uh, famous project, but the, there are a lot of other projects not as well known. I don't know if you're familiar with Wikimedia Commons. It's a repository of files, mostly images, uh, sounds, and video, but also other, uh, other files. I've actually just uploaded uh, the slides to Wikimedia Commons. Now we know how you're going to spend the next five years. Yes. <laughs> uh, I configure this to. Uh, okay, you work. I had this very good idea of disabling the touchpad when a mouse is <laughs> on and it doesn't work that well. Uh, another, there's another project, and I will start uh, soon. There's another uh, very successful project, which I personally was quite surprised, uh, which is uh, Wikidata. Uh, are you familiar with it? Uh, which is not just having uh, text and uh, images on, on wiki pages, but actually have a repository of a free database, a database of everything. Uh, so we, it's a structured data that can be queried by uh, anyone. Um, so if you're interested in knowing more, uh, uh, please visit there's a wikimedia.org and the wikimediafoundation.org uh, websites, and you can check all our projects. And uh, of course, I will uh, encourage you to edit Wikipedia. Let me ask who who participate. Particip uh, make some content or edits or has ever edited on Wikipedia or any? OK, the rest, what are you waiting for? We need your contributions. Please, please, it takes just a mobile phone to edit uh, something. And with things like Wikidata, uh, a photograph, an image, uh, it takes very little to, to contribute. Um, the other thing, bef uh, just before we properly start, is we are hiring on the uh, uh, site reliability engineering team. So if someone wants to work with us after, even after everything I will tell you, uh, please uh, contact me or you can go to, to this website. Yeah, you can trust him on that. <laughs> What's this joke? Um, uh, my school enters in a bar and says, and goes to a table and says, can I join you? And as you can see, I'm horrible at telling jokes. <laughs> I shouldn't even try. 
Okay, let's go. So I did the uh, long introduction before. Um, I will present now myself properly. I'm Jaime Crespo. I work as a DBA, uh, database administrator in the technology team for the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, I'm going to talk about TLS. Uh, TLS, I will be talking sometimes, I will mention in TLS, sometimes I will be saying SSL. Uh, in all cases, I will really mean TLS, but because uh, my SQL and MariaDB is still referring on configuration and many other projects as SSL, sometimes I will uh, say SSL. And one of the myths uh, I have been found around um, uh, TLS is that it is hard and it is it doesn't work because I have a lot of load, so I cannot enable it, uh, so I need to run in a, a less secure environment. Um, for the first thing, which is DLS is hard, I had to say, no, it is not. Um, this is an actual commit of our public uh, Puppet repository. We use Puppet for configuration management. And this is a, um, a commit that I uh, personally did, I think, a couple of years ago. And literally, this is everything that it is to uh, enable DLS. It's literally three lines of code, three, this is on the client, this is on the server, this is an actual, the actual production configuration that we use uh, for, for MediaWiki. And yeah, well, I added some flags so we can enable and disable at will, but that's it. So uh, that's how you enable TLS. I'm done, thank you very much, that's all. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> um, the rest of the talk, I won't be telling you about TLS. I actually don't know that much. I'm not a, a security expert. I'm not a traffic expert. We have people that knows too much about, uh, knows enough about cryptography, about uh, security. What I'm going to talk to you is about all the operational pains as a DBA to uh, enable this on a relatively large scale. So I will focus now on the large scale part. Um, I'm not actually sure if we are that large. Uh, and let me ask you, for example, how many of you on your own are responsible for handling at least one MySQL, MariaDB, or Percona server? OK, uh, keep your hand up if you have more than 10. If you handle on your own more than 100, more than 1,000, okay, we can see that those people are the ones that are really uh, large scale. Uh, the thing I decided to call our, ourselves large scale is because um, if I show you, uh, things like this, I may not be able to. Is that we, one of the great things of being able to work on the Wikimedia Foundation is that I can actually show you this. This is my NWiki installation on over two data centers. And we have a few of this. And I can keep uh, scrolling. If you ask some of those people that have thousands, and I know they're much larger than us, they probably can't show you this. I can show you in real time. This is actually real time of uh, how many queries, how many servers uh, do I have. So my actual, um, my actual, uh, what I want to show you is, um, how I failed to actually enable TLS, uh, it's actually a, a, an ongoing project, because I can open, uh, speak, uh, speak openly about um, everything that I did and I failed, so maybe you don't have to commit the same mistakes that I did. And uh, uh, this is basically a summary of everything that we have on our tracking system, which is open for everyone to, to see. Um, the best, or the biggest failure probably 
was that we rush to production. Um, I was when I was working. I was at the time the only DBA. I was in charge of maintaining all those databases, uh, putting out fires. There was very little automation. I will talk about that uh, later. Um, but we were going to do a data center failover for the first time. And we needed encryption on the replication channels, on the MySQL replication channels. So what did I do? Uh, what did I do? Um, I did that commit I showed you before. I enabled TLS. And I said, well, I mean, this is just for a test. So I will just create a test certificate. Uh, what happens with test configuration and, and test deployment? That test things become permanent. Uh, but I was wise. I knew I had to force myself to not something that is temporary to be permanent. So what did I do? I generate a temporary certificate for was just one year. In one year, it will expire. Uh, do you know where I'm going to? Do you know who was uh, restarting servers in a rush because the TLS was about to expire? <laughs> yes, that person. So uh, that's a lesson. Uh, TLS is not difficult to do it, but probably it was my fault to not push back and say, hey, if we need this to be done with a specific schedule, maybe we can do other kind of encryption that is easier to switch and to manage. Uh, an SHH tunnel, a VPN encryption, anything that we can like, change quickly and later we will do uh, what uh, I had to do, which is, uh, in this case, work three times as much. First, to enable things, do a full fleet restart, then undo the things, and then redo the things properly. Um, uh, the other problem was resources, and happily, uh, after that, I got at least uh, uh, some help to manage uh, that. I'm not uh, longer in my own. Um, the other problem we face is orchestration. That's something that, again, at the time, we didn't have the proper resources. Um, so we weren't able to do very quick full fleet restarts. And uh, that's something that I think is uh, pr one of the other big problems with MySQL. Uh, and I will talk later about things I would like, I would like to change on MySQL to make things easier and is that every time that you have to enable for the first time uh, encryption or you have to change the certificates, which was the case on this second rollover, change the certificates to, uh, uh, in this case, we started using uh, the, our, the same puppet uh, certificates that we were using for, for our configuration management. We reused them for uh, MySQL 2. Um, but every time there was an, an open SSL bug, you were supposed to also restart MySQL, in this case not because of a change of a certificate, um, but also because, well, you have to upgrade OpenSSL. Upgrading OpenSSL is quite easy, but MySQL has to get the new shared library. And for that, you need to uh, do a, a restart. Um, and there was a problem in terms of um, server and client coordination because um, at that time we enabled only um, uh, encryption just for replication but if we wanted to change the CA it was uh, always an, an internal CA uh, the cross DC replication from data center 1 to data center 2 it was not easy to coordinate that because if you change it here now replication is broken so, of course, you could just disable replication, but at that point, the point was, no, no, once we have enabled replica uh, encrypted replication, we cannot go back to uh, uh, plain text. So we had to do complex topology changes to be able to replicate from, uh, different, uh, from a replica that had a different CA, do failovers, blah, blah, blah. Most of this would have been much easier if we had what the tools that we have right now in terms of orchestration to uh, handle this easy. You want to know more about uh, orchestration? There is a, a talk on the configuration management track uh, by Ricardo 
and I uh, recommend you to go there and check what uh, some uh, open source tools we have uh, developed. Uh, I already mentioned this, uh, server support. Um, we hit bugs with uh, encryption not working, uh, literally. Uh, some older versions were incompatible with the newest standards of uh, TLS. Uh, and uh, I don't know exactly what was the issue, but uh, the version that we were at the time, a couple of years ago, we were still on 5.5, didn't absolutely work for the uh, kind of encryption that we want. OK, we just upgrade. Um, the other issue that we face is that um, only OpenSSL linked packages of MySQL uh, works with modern versions of uh, TLS. I'm talking 1.2 and in the future uh, 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 1.3, um, which means at that time, the, both the upstream packages and the uh, ones that were provided by, by our distribution, either Ubuntu or uh, Debian, they didn't work. In, in fact, uh, Debian considers OpenSSL license, the old one or the current one, and not compatible with GPL. So it's not a bug. Of, and it's not a question of this doesn't work. No, they, at least for what I'm told, they don't uh, plan to link it because of some technicality on, on the license, which I, I'm not against. But we definitely need strong encryption uh, here. Uh, if we're going to, to do it. So not, that was not the only reason. We also wanted to um, have uh, custom applied patches, security, backports, and other stuff. But we, one of the things we had to do is to um, create our own packaging of uh, MySQL, uh, well, in this case, uh, MariaDB. We're currently using uh, MariaDB 10.0 and we're migrating to uh, MariaDB 10.1. Um, more pain. Client support, third party support. Uh, some of uh, the developers may also be here. Um, we had problems with PHP uh, 5.5 that wasn't fully compatible with OpenSSL 1.2. Um, and this is probably, in, in general, the, the biggest pain. Uh, most client libraries, connectors, etc., have some kind of support for open, for, sorry, TLS, uh, uh, but not 1.2. And the problem is TLS 1.0 and 1.1 has uh, protocols that are vulnerable to uh, security uh, problems, uh, to uh, security exploits. So uh, we definitely wanted to go for the secure uh, 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 for the secure uh, uh, protocol, um, for the one that at this time doesn't have no bugs, at least the, um, uh, depending on the, on the Christian algorithm. Um, the other thing is we have been starting playing with things like proxy SQL, and that's something that Rene, uh, uh, I have been uh, <laughs> sending him bugs and. Uh, and uh, the problem with proxy SQL, for example, which is not a client or a connector, is that because it was using an older client, the client that proxy SQL integrated didn't support 1.2. And that's kind of a, a blocker, as you can see, for, for us. Um, and then, as a, something that is a bit curious, people were starting to see that they write colleagues uh, MySQL, and they that stop working, and it says something like TLS error or something like that. Why was that? Well, um, one of the biggest problems that I have uh, um, to work to make me understand is that handling TLS for MySQL is a completely different problem to handle or enabling TLS for something like Apache. Apache has uh, the concept of virtual hosts. Um, the way you use Apache is normally with a public certificate that uh, is uh, validated by the uh, external uh, CA. In our case, we handle the whole stuff with our own internal CA. 
Um, and typically, you connect through an IP address, but the certificates are based on a domain. So if you go through local host, for example, through a socket, and we have enabled validate the domain, uh, you cannot connect because the domain and local host doesn't match. So that's a silly thing, but uh, something to, to have into account when uh, enabling this. Um, there were some things that went well, I have to say. Um, one of the things that I think we did well is um, uh, rolling it, when we roll it into production, we did opt-in, which means that we enable the support, but every single client can be uh, slowly enabled on the use of TLS. Um, um, for example, we started with the replication channel because it's really easy. If you want to use encryption, uh, starting to uh, enable TLS through the replication channel, it has almost no performance impact. I will tell you later uh, why, but it's mostly related that it's a single connection that is ongoing all the time. There's no a lot of connects and disconnects. And uh, the impact on performance is almost, at least in our case, uh, nil, nil, no, no performance impact there. The, other, the second step is enabling it for administration channels or things that are not uh, pure client uh, heavy hitters. Things like administration, things like um, schema changes, things like uh, things that don't really need the performance. It doesn't matter if connecting takes one second, when the connection takes one second, because you know you can wait. Um, um, also going from uh, through TLS 2.2, because if uh, we had to, we had enabled it with the uh, with the non-open SSL, JA uh, SSL, or uh, one of these products that uh, doesn't provide you full compatibility, we will be doing again even more work to now enable uh, TLS.2 uh, or in the future .3. Uh, um, and well, support in terms of we are in a place that we, people are really concerned about privacy and security. So having the support from uh, management on uh, you know, yes, spend time on this because this is important. It's something that you really want to have. You don't want to say, hey, don't waste time on that security stuff because it, it takes a, a toll on you. Uh, we are not aiming for 100% uh, coverage right now. Uh, when I created this proposal, I was hoping that we will already have the 100% coverage, but uh, it will eventually come. And in most cases, in our case, uh, it, it is due to uh, application changes that are needed, and we are now going to migrate from HHVM to PHP 7, so there's a lot of work that uh, gets there. And, uh, you know, there's only two DBAs, so we work on this on our free time, let's say. Um, this is a couple of things I wanted to show you uh, for the idea of um, I'm worried about how much of a performance hit this will have on, a, uh, on us. And I think you can trust me that we have quite some uh, performance. If I have time, I will show you our real-time monitoring that is public of how many queries, how many uh, risks we have. Um, this is some test that we did on idle host, so it's not fully representative of an actual uh, full load. But what, uh, Forget about so many numbers, and I want to uh, remark that the difference between uh, SSL or TLS connections is what is can be problematic. We are talking about 20 times to 50 times slower of the time uh, for connecting, but in terms of actual query performance. the impact is less than 5%. So uh, what, what does this tell us? Just fix the uh, client library so they use persistent connection, and that's the whole point of our interest on uh, uh, proxy SQL. So we can have proper, there's some kind of reusing of connections at application level right now, but we need full 
uh, pre-creation of connections so that that overhead is already f uh, already forgotten by the time you need a, a query ready. So you could do the same too. Uh, uh, in our case, the changing the architecture takes a bit uh, of time, enabling things like proxy SQL. Um, we are not in a rush because we wanted this for mostly cross DC queries, which right now we don't do, but we may be eventually uh, doing. Uh, but we may fix that in a different way in which uh, you only have, uh, we may only need to do uh, uh, same DC uh, queries, which is what uh, we wanted to do. Um, as the last thing is, okay, how could you ease my pain, the rest of you? Um, there's literally, and probably more, uh, three uh, bugs. The last one is mine. The first one, I think, is by Simon. Is Simon here? Um, and the uh, th second one is by Eric. And these are bugs all related to please allow us to change certificates in a hallway. So if there's any people from my school over there, please have a look at those bugs. Maybe like uh, Marcus duplicates. Uh, from the people that are not part of my school, uh, but are part of the MySQL community. Support of proper TLS uh, would be great. Uh, Rene is going, for example, in the case of proxy SQL, super uh, 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 helpful in that case. Um, uh, and proper OpenSSL 1.1 support, uh, which uh, I think it's available in both MySQL and MariaD on the latest versions, but we cannot all be on the latest MySQL or MariaDB versions, so it would be helpful to kind of support all the versions of, uh, of uh, MySQL or MariaDB. Um, well, if you have metrics, you have tests, please share them. I will, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I already talked about pending work, uh, uh, but uh, that's, that's it. Uh, basically finishing the migration. One thing I didn't mention is TLS is not only for security from the point of view of someone is in the middle trying to uh, get queries that are going or private data. The other thing is uh, enabling more secure authentication methods, which until 8.0, it was only possible if you were using uh, TLS on the connection. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, if you have any questions, we may have one minute for that, a couple of minutes. Yes. So there's, there's several components because, uh, so I will repeat the question. I just want to show the, our uh, real-time monitoring here. As a, this is our load of most of our data. So the question is, what do we use for orchestration? Um, <coughs> so it's a combination of things, depending on, on what you call orchestration. One of the things that has been introduced recently is a custom-made tool which uh, was called uh, uh, Cumin, which basically is a, a proper replacement for salt, which was what was used for executing remote commands in a parallel way. And this is a much better replacement. You won't know about that. That's the, the talk I, I mentioned. Um, in terms of my scholar orchestration, we are kind of trying to build a custom library because things like orchestrator, uh, it doesn't fit very well our own case, use cases. Um, in terms of um, uh, pooling and the pooling servers, uh, in the past we were not, that was not a tool, that was not something we, we wanted. We had to go through uh, the database um, code commits, which was horrible. The, the current work right now is uh, to have some kind of dynamic configuration uh, uh, object server and probably it's going to be something like ATCD so we can change much more dynamically the weights and the pool uh, servers. Once we have ETCD 
and uh, with the help of cumin, it will be some things but, uh, that are left, like automatic master slave switch, but that I think will be much easier once the other things are fully on, on place. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, so, a lot of different things. Um, and not something like um, uh, commercial in terms of something that already exists. More questions? You have time, and why I said you have. You can answer the question. No, no, no. Yes? Any? Sorry? Uh, yes. So, uh, our full stack is MariaDB, sorry, uh, PHP, MariaDB, uh, Varnish. Well, there's a lot of technology there. Uh, as a rule, we just use uh, open source or free software. Um, uh, around the whole, so we don't let any anything to be installed on our servers if it's not open source. Uh, I think there are some exceptions, like people in the office may use Windows or something like that. But in terms of servers, yes, it's it's fully open source. Last question from Mark. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the problems, the, the, the idea is, well, have a double certification so you can migrate easily. Uh, yes, and definitely, to be fair, right now that's not a huge problem because the problem was migrating from the bad testing stuff to the proper stuff. Uh, and definitely there's ways to solve that. I may not be using double certificate because it doesn't actually solve the possible compromise of the CA authority. So you still have to have a way to uh, kind of restart the server to introduce uh, uh, like a new non-existing CA. And in terms of, for example, replication is actually much easier than I said because uh, the certificates uh, and the configuration for replication is purely dynamic already. So it's not really a huge concern. It was just at the time. Show me, uh, like, let's talk outside because it's a much larger question. Thank you very much.